Alright, welcome back to Tecmo 101. Mort here, getting ready for the Tecmo Players Championship. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing in a lot of these videos is going over matchups. And the reason I'm doing this is because in Division 1 of the Tecmo Players Championship, once you play in a matchup, you can't use the matchup again. Doesn't matter if you call it, doesn't matter if somebody calls it. If you're in Division 2, we just use the standard, once you call a matchup, you can't use it. But for Division 1, the new rule means you're going to need more matchups than you normally need in a tournament. Some tournaments, you might be able to win the tournament with maybe 5 matchups. And some maybe like 6 or 7, depending on whether if your matchup calls reset after group play. And that's okay, but I want to have a tournament that has a more rigorous standard so that you have to know more of the game to win and maybe survive a little luck. But there are some tricks and strategy to this. This is why, first, I want to go over the band teams. So the band teams are going to be San Francisco, the 49ers, obviously, the New York Giants, the Buffalo Bills, Houston Oilers, we're also going to be banning New England, Indianapolis, and Seattle. I know you're asking me right now, what does that mean they're banned and nobody can beat them? And that's not exactly true. All it means is you can't match up those seven teams against each other. I mean, naturally, nobody is going to be matching up San Francisco versus New England. But you can't do San Fran Buffalo or Buffalo Houston, Buffalo Giants. The reason behind this is I want to keep the games in the middle of the game where I think skill is even more of a deciding factor. So this just makes it a little bit harder to win the tournament. But there are, there's one thing, since you only have so many matchups, there are, there are, there, we got to go over top matchups of every team. And these teams aren't completely banned from Division One. You can call, say, Seattle versus Green Bay. You could also say call Buffalo versus Kansas City, which I think are both great matchups and also give you the advantage. If you think you can win these games, you're saving matchups that you could use later on. So right now, I'm going to go over a couple matchups that I think from the band teams that if you feel like that you want to take a risk on, they're, they're more 50-50 games, but they might save you a couple matchups later on in the final rounds to call these. And we're going to start off with the one I just mentioned. We're going to go over the Seattle. And the reason why Seattle is going to be a good team is Dave Craig. Craig has 69 pass control. And as a lot of you who are experienced know, pass control is the key stat for a quarterback. Unfortunately, Dave Craig has 25 passing speed, and that makes him very inaccurate and at times frustrating. But with this pass control... He could throw it deep. His other issue, unfortunately, is that on his squad of receivers, 31 MS, so that's running back, 38, 30, 25, 38, 19 MS, and 25 MS. He doesn't have the fastest receivers, but he has guys who can catch. Tommy Kane is a very good catch receiver. Jeff Chadwick, he's a beast. As, you, as I know from my Demon Tap Tech League, you also have John L. Williams, the fullback, who's very slow, but he catches the ball as well. And that makes them a pretty good matchup against, say, the Packers, another passing team, where it's a JJ, where it's just passing and 50 50 tech ball. With, and you're going up against this secondary, which is slow and has two guys at 50 INT, but you outclass them with a 69 pass control quarterback. And that gives you some matchup advantage. Another team Seattle would do well against is Cleveland. This is the same theory where basically you're hoping to outscore the other team because now you're going up against QB Browns. The Packers, you are going up against Don Machowski and Sterling Sharp. But the advantage with Cleveland is the QB Browns, he doesn't have the receivers. He has, a, he, has a, he has the equivalent receivers of Seattle. These guys are slow. 38, 25, 19. They can catch the ball, but they're slow. That's going to give him advantage. And then the secondary, Frank Minifield is pretty good. But the rest of it is pedestrian. Uh, Felix Wright with 50 INT. But this is something that with the greater pass control, you're going to be able to take advantage. And those are two matchups I would recommend. Matchups I wouldn't recommend is New England. I wouldn't... I, I would, I would be willing to risk New England versus Cleveland or New England versus Green Bay. But 
there's a danger you won't get this offense going because they're they're not as good. But I mean, if you could get Marv Cook going, New England will match up against both of those teams. I would suggest against New England versus New Orleans, just because I feel like the uh, the defense of the Saints is very powerful. The linebacking core will shut down your running game. And these defensive backs aren't the greatest, but there's a 56 INT guy versus your 44 pass control quarterback. Now, I mean, you're going to get it. And New England's best weapon on defense is Ronnie Lippett, 63 INTs, which is dominant versus the 44 pass control of John Forcade. But he is the bottom cornerback, and that position is exposed often in matchups to running backs running at the bottom cornerback. So that's why I'm not as high on those matchups. I, w I would also consider Seattle versus New Orleans. That would uh, to me that would be just that would be a little bit more viable. But I mean the point is is that if you're a better New England player than I am, maybe you say you know what I want to do New England say New Orleans or New England Cleveland, and risk it one game and then save some of my better matchups for the elimination rounds. On the other end of the scale, on the high end. We have San Francisco, who I would strongly advise not to match up against any team in the lower tier. In fact, even to put in any matchup anyways. If you're in Division 2, don't put them in a matchup. Uh, yeah, don't, don't put them in a matchup. Um, now, Houston, Houston, one matchup I've seen over the years that I like for to go against Houston is either Houston versus Chicago or Houston versus the Raiders. And basically, it's taking a great running back because the pat is one is take is just to take the great running back Bo Jackson and run him at Richard Johnson who's at the top cornerback. But be careful because Houston does have a great LB four and that destroys some plays. But this passing game is amazing. Warren Moon, you got Ernest Givens, fifty six MS, seventy five receptions. Awood Jeffries, Drew Hill, these guys are beasts in the passing game. I mean, Warren Moon, though, has a lot of passing speed, and ideally you'd want your great passing quarterback to have 56 passing speed. So that's a little bit of something you might take advantage of with, say, Chicago, Chicago secondary. So if you're willing to risk Chicago-Houston or Houston Raiders, another matchup I would also recommend, and this is courtesy of the Retro Sports Gamer, is KC versus Buffalo. Now, I know you're all thinking Buffalo outclasses them, and a lot, like a lot of these matchups, it's not about stopping the other team. It's about what you can do against this team. Buffalo has a big weakness. Buffalo's secondary doesn't have a lot of INT. The best guy has 50. At the same time, they have a linebacker who also has 44 INT. But they don't have the greatest at, at, at picking the ball off. KC... Has DeBerg has a sweet connection between Steve DeBerg and Stefan Page, but then there's the Christian Akoy factor. This is important. Christian Akoy, 94 hitting power, 75 rushing power, and what happens is Bruce Smith has 75 hitting power. Cornelius Bennett has 63 hitting power. Now start looking at some of these other guys. 44 popcorn, 38 popcorn, 38 popcorn. 38. What I mean by popcorn is is Christian Okoye is just going to run it, run him over, and they're going to bounce right off of him. Shane Conlon it probably has enough to stop it, but Bentley can't. Daly doesn't have enough hitting power. Leon Sills, dead. And then Jeff Wright, probably. But there are, there are probably only three guys on this defense. Bruce Smith, Shane Conlon, and Cornelius Bennett who aren't going to be popcorn when they get ran over by Christian Okoye. So that means you're going to be able to run the ball and pass the ball on the Bills. And you're also going to have a great run defense to go up against Thurman Thomas. The one week, one real problem is, is that this guy's out there. His name's QB Bills, and he's pretty freaking good. <laughs> and he has, some, he has a decent, he has a great receiver in Andre Reid, Don BB, James Lofton. And that is, like I said, it's a coin toss. But it's a pretty good close to 50-50 coin toss, in my opinion. Maybe 60-40, but I, I think it's a very viable matchup. I wouldn't say to call all these matchups in the Tech Bowl Players Championship, but I would say you should consider a couple of them.
Because this way you're looking at it, oh, I'm going to play 15 games and I'm going to be out of matchups and scratching my head. Well, here are some new matchups for you, for you to learn, where you might, you might even lose the game. But you might go through later on saying, well, even though I lost that game, a lot of people lose games in this tournament. It's not like other tournaments where all the good players go five and all. This field's intense. You, you, could, have a, you could have a bad day and lose momentum. It, it could happen. This is, this, is, this is an intense field that we've seen over two years. So the point is is that you just got to be prepared for that and you got to have a strategy. You, 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 you're probably going to lose a game. You may not be used to losing games in group play, but it's probably going to happen. It's, it's probably going to happen to everybody. And if you lose that one game out of Buffalo KC or Seattle versus Green Bay, you're going to at least be happy knowing that you saved a really good matchup. All right, and that's my video for today to help you guys learn more about Tecmo and my tournament, the Tecmo Players Championship. I'm going to continue this, these matchup videos. I'm going to go through team by team and try to give you the top three matchups for every team. Otherwise, just stay tuned for more Tecmo training videos, and I'd hope to see you guys in April in Chicago at the Tecmo Players Championship. Can't wait, can't wait.